<laughs> Hello, this is Ralph. Hi, Ralph. It's Maria from b and I heard you were speaking at Optic this year, and I figured I'd introduce you to the audience. Do you have time for 21 questions? Yes, absolutely. I was actually expecting your call. I'm just getting ready now to, to go out here in uh, Charlotte um, to go see the Eagles near my house. Amazing. So tell us what you do for a living. Well, I'm a photographer and I'm a travel photographer and I work with Lindblad Expeditions and National Geographic on the National Geographic fleet. Amazing. That's awesome. And things are a little different right now because, um, of course, with the world situation, we're not traveling at the moment. So I have lots of time to study these eagles and I've been doing that for the last six weeks. And so you're going to take us out to go check out these eagles? That's right. We're going to exit my townhouse here in Piper Glen on the golf course and head over to the Eagles Nest. Cool. Let's do All it. All right. Follow along. Okay. I'm at the golf cart now. I just talked to Ben, who's the cart master, and we're gonna, he lets me borrow the carts to go down to the Eagles. I think I'm the only one to do that here at the golf course. And how did you get so lucky to have this right in your backyard? Well, we are really lucky. Um, believe it or not, when I bought the townhouse, I did not know there was a bald eagle's nest here. And there's also a beaver pond. So we have beaver that I've been photographing as well. So I've been coming out and checking out uh, the eagles now for about the, the last six weeks. Of course, we could see a little more of the eagle's nest before the leaves came. But we got the eagles. I got to photograph the eagles as they were... Um, working on the nest, uh, flying in at sunset. All right, so you ready? We're going to yes. head down to the eagle's nest. All right, cool. follow me if you can. All right now, so while I've arrived at the eagle's nest, I've had to park in a little bit of a different position from uh, where I normally do because they're doing a little work on the driving range. And we also have a killdeer here nesting very close. So um, I do have the view though. I'm going to set my tripod here so I can see this, uh, the tree, the snag, the eagle's nest is in the, the big green tree. And then there's a snag and we've got golf carts everywhere this morning, but it's amazing. These eagles um, are habituated. When I've been photographing, if I stay in my golf cart, I'm okay. As soon as I get out of the golf cart and I see the camera, then then they uh, move away. So <laughs> it's kind of funny that way. And it sounds like you're having a lot of fun at home, but has this quarantine affected your workflow at all? Well, it has because I'm a travel photographer and and I'm used to traveling. So I've been home now for two months. And uh, which is probably the first time in about 10 years that I've been home this long. But it actually has been great to spend time with my images. And so I'm actually been able to go back to some of the trips I've been doing and pulling some things for the book projects I'm working on. And um, actually keeping in touch with a lot of people during this time. So it's been that's interesting great. that way. Yeah, that's great. And then, so what got you into photography? Utah, the Red Rocks of Utah. Long time ago, traveled out in my Volkswagen van to Utah and uh, saw the Red Rocks of Utah and I was seeing things I'd never seen before. I hadn't seen in books. Uh, this is in the late 70s. And I fell into buying a four by five Graflex camera. I figured if I'm gonna be a photographer, I'm gonna have a real camera like Ansel Adams. So that was your first camera? That was my first serious camera. I did have a, uh, well, my dad had given me my Konica or he gave me a Konica a range finder when I did a trip earlier than that, but I was really not interested in photography until I, so it wasn't like I was a photographer in high school. I, I was a, an athlete and I studied geology. Uh, so seeing the landscapes of Utah really um, did it for me. So I know that you founded the expedition photography with Limblad and it seems like the dream job. What does that exactly does that entail? Well, I'm the director of expedition photography now, and it's now been 20 years um, doing this. So originally I was an expedition leader on the ship and talking geology about the places we travel. And so now it, it entails going out and teaching on the ships. And I've got a whole team, photography team of photographer naturalists. There's more than 50 of us uh, that work on the ships. We're up to nine ships traveling the world. 
And um, so it entails going out and being in the moment with people, getting people into great situations where they can uh, photograph nature. Because that's what it's about, is the adventure and being in the moment and telling the story of the expeditions. And that's the big thing that we do, is we teach people how to tell the story of their trips, not just to get that one shot. So clearly teaching is a huge part of your life, and that kind of brings us to this year's BNH, BNH's virtual optic. Uh, why do you love to teach so much? What is it about it that uh, drives you in your career? Well, I kind of fell into teaching um, back when I was living in Santa Fe. Uh, the Santa Fe workshops are there, so I was traveling on the ships, and my teaching started when we started the photo expeditions on the ship, and what I love is how people's eyes light up and how the, the bells go off um, when they finally understand that they are seeing the world the way their camera sees the world, not just the way their eyes see the world. And a lot of people are adapting now with doing more virtual teaching. Have you been getting into any of that virtual teaching or even virtual learning? Well, the virtual, I'll say, well, I'll answer the virtual learning part. Um, I'm a recent convert to the Olympus system. Uh, I switched just last year so that I can have uh, lighter lighter camera bags and also some of the Olympus technology is great for wildlife photography. Yeah. Um, so I've been actually listening to a lot of the Olympus tutorials online, uh, but I've been getting a lot of requests for online presentations. You know, Zoom is the thing now where you can yeah. give a presentation to 50 or 100 people. Um, so I've got, in addition to Optic, which we'll be doing uh, virtually, uh, a couple of the travel companies that, uh, in addition to Lindblad, that charter with Lindblad, have asked me to give talks to their to their members. So, so that's fun. That's great. And so you mentioned that you just switched over. What's your go-to camera and lens? Yes, um, I just switched to the Olympus system last year. So my go-to camera is the M1X. And if I had to choose one lens, if I'm just doing kind of a walkabout and I need a versatile lens, it's the 12 to 100 zoom which in micro four thirds is a 24 to 200. And the Olympus actually at my, my stage of my, my career, switching to a new camera has revitalized me because now I am also learning a new system. And you can see my camera here, uh, the M1X. I've got the 300 millimeter on it here for photographing the Eagles with a 1.4 X extender. So this is 840 millimeters, which for me is a game changer. If I was here with you know, a full frame, camera it would be this huge bazooka but now i have a camera that i can actually hand hold and photograph wildlife so that's the game changer for me so aside from landscape and wildlife photography are there other styles you like to play around with well for um not in my normal work um i do shoot portraits because i'm always looking for people especially in nature, doing what they love to do, hiking. And so a lot of the brochure photography, you know, I'm just looking for those moments. Not so much setups. Um, you know, not being a studio photographer, uh, if I had total control, I'd, I'd, I'd struggle. But when I'm out and about, if I see a shot, I know it when I see it. And um, so I do en enjoy shooting people. And when I was teaching a lot of the National Geographic, for 10 years, a decade, I, I taught National Geographic workshops in places like San Miguel de Allende or Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I love street photography. That's also fun because it's a great way to interact and get to know cultures is, is with your camera. You're like a warrior with a camera. You're going into these scenes. And it, it, I'm actually an introvert, but it makes me an extrovert in a situation when I have my camera and there's a street scene. Mm -hmm. And you share a lot of your photos on Instagram. Why do you think it's so important for the public to learn about nature and wildlife and having these outlets like Instagram and social media to share that? Well, I did come kicking and screaming to the whole social media thing, um, being of my generation. But what I love about it and why I've embraced it now, especially for nature, is that when people see beautiful images and images of beautiful places and compelling images, images with impact of wildlife, um, they're curious and they might study about a place or they'll go travel to that place. And when people learn about places and when they learn about animals and they learn how, how fragile things are, then they care. So I do think there's a wave of people, armchair travelers who can't get there, but get there vicariously by looking at images online. Mm -hmm. And so I know this is going to be hard to answer, but what's your favorite part of what you do? 
My favorite part of what I do um, is actually it's kind of like what we're doing now is getting up and getting out and being in nature, being with wildlife, observing wildlife, and being in the moment. Uh, life itself is all about being in the moment, and the more you're in the present moment, I think the more life has has meaning. And if I can record those moments and capture those moments and share them with people, that's really what drives me. Mm -hmm. And so what are a couple tips you could give the people watching right now who want to learn about wildlife photography? Tips for wildlife photography, um, it's probably one of the most difficult things to, to get into because you've got to um, have lenses that are longer and all that aside. But aside from the technical, it's about learning your subject. So if you want to be a wildlife photographer, are you into birds or are you into the big mammals? Um, so you need to do some research and learn about the animals, where they are, what time of year that you need to go see them. Of course, there's so many photographers leading people to the places, all these, these photo workshops um, that take people to the location or photo expeditions. Um, but learning about the animals and also then learning your camera so it's an extension of yourself mm -hmm. so that you're ready in the moment when things happen. Awesome. And so you mentioned expeditions. What's the craziest expedition you've ever been on? Well, the craziest expedition I've ever been on was um, actually the first trip I took after I left my job as a geologist. I had worked as a geologist for a few years uh, to get out of debt from graduate school. And I was invited on a month-long Grand Canyon river trip in the winter. And we were matching historical photographs from a century ago. So we had to put on the river when they did, and that was in January. So imagine getting on a cold whitewater river in January, but we were very lucky with the weather only four mornings below freezing. And that was pretty crazy to spend a month going down a river. Uh, of course, this was during film, so I didn't have the battery issues that we have today, but uh, that was a challenging trip. And uh, it was crazy at times because we were running a wild river in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Wow, yeah, I that is crazy. And uh, what was the most difficult location to get to? Well, we do it in a great way, but the most difficult place to get to is Antarctica. And I say that for one reason, even though you're going down there on the ship, but you have to cross the Drake Passage. And sometimes the Drake Passage is called Drake Lake, where it's just flat calm. Other times it's, well, it's the stormiest ocean on the planet. And other times, uh, you've got 30-foot seas, and you wonder why you work on a ship. But once you're down there, it's pristine, it's beautiful, and it's worth it. And is there anywhere you haven't been yet that you really want to go to? Oh, I get this question a lot. Where haven't, uh, where haven't I been that I wanted to get to? Um, and that, that, that's a tough one. I haven't spent much time in Asia, so I'm going to say I would love to see pandas in the wild in China. That's one dream. And also the tigers in India. I haven't spent much that time in that part of the world. So what's your favorite animal to photograph? That's an easy one. Uh, polar bears or the polar bear. There is nothing like, and this is where video is probably better than stills, but you can still capture amazing moments, but there's nothing like being out there searching for a white creamy spot in a white landscape and then seeing a polar bear and seeing how it moves and seeing how it moves across the ice and seeing in its natural environment. So it's the polar bear, without a doubt. And now polar bears are more of a cold climate, so are you a summer or winter person? Tough questions, um, winter, because I do believe that you can make some of the most amazing images in bad weather. And if you want to separate yourself, especially now with all the photography that's out there, get out in bad weather, get out there in the winter. And um, I do go to the tropics, but I'm not good at 95 degrees and 100% humidity. That really is tiring and difficult to photograph in those situations. In a dark rainforest when it's hot and there's bugs, winter definitely and if you weren't a photographer what would you be if i hadn't discovered photography um back when i was a, a fledgling geologist um i would have been a geologist and i probably would have studied the rocks where i studied in the grand canyon for my masters 
and I would have probably got my PhD and worked at a college in the Southwest or worked at the U.S. Geological Survey, which has a beautiful field station in Flagstaff. But I'd definitely be living in the Southwest in the Canyon country and looking at all those beautiful rock layers that make up the Grand Canyon and Arches and Bryce and Zion and those places. And a lot of the people that we ask questions, they tell us about some of the best advice they've given them that has helped them throughout their career. What's some of the best piece of advice you've ever received? That's also an interesting question. Um, The best advice I ever received was when I I met a photographer. I was in Capitol Reef National Park, and I was actually struggling with my 4x5. You know, I was new to it. And there was a photographer out there with a 4x5, and I asked him, I said, what did it take for you to be a photographer? And he said, persistence. He goes, first, you have to discover your passion. What is, is it that you like to photograph? Is it people? Is it portraits? Is it weddings? Is it wildlife? And then you have to be persistent. He said, you had to give yourself 10 years. And he said, do whatever it takes to keep shooting. And if there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? Ah, that's an easy one. Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones. He's adventurous, he's witty, and he's got a signature hat. (laughs) And last question, who should we interview next? Who should we interview next? Well, I'm going to nominate, and I don't know if you know him yet, Rich Reed. He's our iPhone guru with National Geographic. He does so much with his iPhone, and he's also going to be speaking at Optic. So that might be the next guy to talk to. I can, I can set you up with him. Awesome. That, that would be great. Okay, so I'm going to let you go. Go photograph those eagles, and thank you so much for having a chat with me. You bet, Maria. Appreciate you calling. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a little challenging here this morning. I'm going to see if the eagles fly. If not, I'm going to come back later at sunset. Have a great day. Awesome. Thanks. You too. Bye.